Hey guys, Guy Britton here with Ilio. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how we can get great sounding pop guitars using THU from Overloud. So let's jump in and take a look at what's going on. Today, we've got two really simple guitar parts. We've got this picked, sort of disco inspired thing going on here. Literally just two notes, really simple. And then we have this more ethereal, pad, shimmery guitar sound that's happening in this section, in this chorus, just to help lift it up a little bit more. So I'll play you a bit of the track and then we'll dive into exactly what's going on. So you can hear the track is very much like rhythmic driven, the bass and the drums really leading the track. Uh, it's quite a disco inspired sort of thing and the guitars are really there just to help supplement that, complement the arrangement and really lift the really lift the song up in that chorus section. So let's see what we're doing in, in THU to create this guitar tone. You'll see in this pre-chorus section, we have these three guitar tracks. Now this is the same part recorded three different times. So it's been triple tracked. We've got guitar pick C, which is the center track, guitar pick left, guitar pick right. And the thinking behind this is that this central track is gonna hold like the weight of the guitar tone. This is where the majority of the tone is gonna come from. And then we need to use the left and right tracks panned hard left and right uh, to create kind of a bit more percussive, thinner sound, which is gonna give it a bit more width and a bit more depth. These tracks have just been recorded DI straight in, so there's no processing on them currently, and this is what they sound like. Which is okay, but like that's not gonna stand up in the track. So we're gonna use uh we're gonna use THU to bring this up and make it sound like a real guitar recorded through a real amp and just show you how quickly and easy we can do this. So I'm gonna bring up the uh instance of THU that I've got loaded on this central pick track. And the first thing you'll see is that I've got this list of presets down the left hand side, which is Full of great starting points if you're looking for somewhere to kind of build a guitar tone from um, but i kind of got an idea in my head of what i want to do so i'm going to start from scratch i'm going to go over to the right hand side and i'm going to click on this drop down and i'm going to select amp and now i'm going to go with this particular style i really like a kind of fender amp it's always been my go-to they they do a really good job of the kind of like right on the edge of breakup and uh, so it's kind of clean but there's like a little bit of saturation going on um, and they always sound really good in the low mids and in the top end. So I'm going to go and pull up the Tweed Deluxe. Um, we're going to say yes to add in the Blue Lux 1x12 cabinet with that. And then we're just going to listen to what that sounds like. And then bypassed. Okay, so I like that it's added like a thickness to this guitar sound now. It sounds much more like it's coming through an amp, but I feel like I've lost a little bit of that transient um, and that brightness that's there in that DI track. So I'm going to try and bring a bit more of that back in. We can hear that breakup starting to happen. That feels like a little too much. One thing to be aware of with this kind of Tweed Deluxe style is that the volume control also acts as the overdrive control. So the more we turn the volume up, the more saturation and distortion we're going to get. I still want it to be clean, but I want it to cut through, have a bit of transient. So that sounds good to me. Okay, and then we're going to go over to this cab here. And you'll see currently it's like a small guitar cab with a AKG C414 on. Um, but if we go up here to the settings here, this is going to bring up this cabinet menu. And now what this does is this allows us to have one or two mics on the cab. But I'm going to Keep it really simple on this one. You see, we've got this list of different microphones that we could use on the cab. We've got like a UA7, Royal 121, um, 609, 421. I'm going to go for an SM57. I wanted to cut through and the SM57 on a guitar amp is great at just giving it a bit more kind of poke in the mix and making it pop out a little bit more accentuated mid-range. So let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, cool. That's good. We're going to keep that mic in the center because that's where we're getting the most treble, the most kind of top end from. 
I do want to pull a little bit more of that out. So I'm going to go down to the pedals now. Under equalizer, I'm going to pull up this seven band EQ and I'm just going to drop that in front as if it was part of a like regular pedal board. It's going to play around with this and see what we can do. Cool, so I like that. We're getting like a sort of a scoop thing going on there, dipping out some of that like 1.6K, but boosting some more of the tops and the low mids. And that gives us like a, almost like a kind of happy face thing going on. Um, and I like how that scoop sound sounds as was what I had in mind initially. One thing, we are getting a little bit more break up, I think, where we're pushing some of these frequencies into the amps. We're just going to back the volume down. And then let's hear that with the drums just to see what that's sounding like sort of with a bit more context to the actual track yeah that's sounding good it's really cutting through feels like it's not getting lost to the sort of transient percussive element of the drum kit which is really important I do feel like it needs a bit more thickness and perhaps a little bit more dimension to it. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and switch this over to a stereo instance of THU and I'm going to add some chorus to it. So what this is going to do is it's going to make it feel wider. It's going to give it a little bit more depth, a bit more modulation. Um, I can, uh, there's various different types of, of chorus effects here. We've got kind of stomp boxes or we've got these more sort of outboard things, which I'm going to put after the amp. Um, in this case, I'm going to go for the wave chorus because I really like how this sounds. Let's have a listen to that. Cool. I like that. It's really added a width to the to the track and it immediately feels like it's sitting in a little bit more. Cool. If I push that uh, modulation too much, then it starts to sound a little bit out, out of tune. So I'm happy. I'm already. I already feel like that's really good. I feel like that's a good starting point for for this particular guitar track. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other two. So we got this left and right track. What I'm actually going to do. This is the beauty of of using these amp sims, is that I can just literally click and drag, and I don't want it to be exactly the same. But this gives me like a jumping off point. Uh, which is going to allow me to build a similar tone so it still sounds cohesive but there is some variation remember that like we want it to be wide and the way that we create width is by adding variation between the left and the right and being able to just like literally click and drag drop the drop the THU onto another track and modify it slightly is so powerful and it's such a quick way of working so what I was saying earlier was that I wanted this particular track to be kind of thin a little bit pokier than the one that we've just worked on um, and I wanted to sort of accentuate that percussive element that's going to give us the width so let's take a listen to that on its own and see if we can shape it without it and then with the other track so you can hear that's really adding it's really adding something if I take that away cool but what we are getting now is quite a lot of noise from that guitar and um, so I'm going to go ahead and go down to noise reduction here and literally just drop in the gate expander and try and get this to just dial away some of that noise. Great. So that's really quick, really simple. Sounds really musical. I'm not losing any of that transient, which you get sometimes with a gate. Like, I don't want to take away the pick of that guitar part because that's what's going to help it cut through. And it's just cleaning up some noise. It's still there a little bit, but it's not going to be heard in the mix like that. So... Yeah, that sounds really good. This right hand track now is going to help sort of gel this together 
and uh, and bring it all together as kind of one cohesive guitar part. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this over, but I'm not gonna just leave it like that. Let's try a different amp. So if I go here, I can replace this with. Let's go to there's a dark face, dark face 65. So again, this is like a Fender kind of thing, um, but a different type of guitar tone. It's probably gonna be uh, maybe a little thicker, um, a little cleaner. Let's take a listen to that. Okay, so already, already that sounds cleaner. Maybe some more treble. Let's try a different mic. Let's go for the one, two, one. And then let's hear that. I like that. That sounds good. I mean, that's just so easy, so quick. The last thing that I want to do is I kind of want to thicken it up a little bit. Um, and a great plugin for doing that is the Gem Tape Desk from Overloud. So I'm just going to go down here and pull that up. And this is just going to give it like a little bit more. It's maybe just going to round off those transients a little bit, make it sound a little bit thicker. Uh, let's just have a listen to that. Let's try it at 7.5 ips. Cool. It's just adding some weight, which I really like. Let's copy that over to the other tracks as well. I'm going to go for a mono instance this time. Last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of room reverb. So I've got this sense setup here, and this is just going to give a little bit more life, make it feel kind of a little bit more realistic. Uh, so let's take a listen to that. Cool, I'm really happy with that. I mean, that was really easy to do. Uh, it's a really simple guitar part. There's not a lot to it. Um, and within five minutes, I've managed to just totally transform how that sounds. And it, it feels real to me. It feels like a real guitar amp should. So let's move on and take a look at the next part. All right, so for this next section, what I want is for, we're going into the chorus now. So I really wanted to lift up. I want to create a guitar tone, which is like a big strum that sounds more kind of like a pad. Uh, I'm going to do something a bit more creative and just get something that really helps the track lift up. So we've got two tracks, another, again, another double track thing going on here. Uh, these ones are just some basic chords. We've got one that's played kind of harder than the other. So we've got this DI'd chord track. Really simple, two very basic chords. And then one played a little more gently. So the thinking is that we're going to have one track which is kind of driven um, and really sort of energetic and uplifting. And then we have this other shimmer track, which essentially almost acts as like a reverb send to create some sort of ethereal movement around the original track. So we're going to start with this first track and I'm going to put up another instance of THU. This time I'm going to go for a stereo version and close the preset menu like we did before and then just enlarge that. This time I want to go for a different amp. So I'm going to go for something like a Vox AC30. Um, and we're going to go for the top 30 UK bright. I'm going to drag that in with the matching cabinet and let's take a listen to what that sounds like. <laughs> 
So really nice. It's got a bite to it. It's kind of driven. Uh, but I want it to be a little bit more mid-rangey and perhaps a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to change out the 414 for a 57 again. And maybe just take away some of that top end. Okay, that's a good start, but I feel like it needs a bit more kind of mid-range push. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another EQ. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost these mid-range frequencies a lot. So it's boosting these mid-range frequencies into the amp. And what that's going to do is distort those mid-range frequencies a bit more. So it almost kind of acts like a multi-band distortion. I'm going to take away some low end. You hear that mid-range breaking up. That's nice. Let's hear that in the track. Okay, that's pretty cool, but we want to make this dreamier now. So next thing I'm going to do is let's try some flanger. We'll, ha we'll add in the wave flanger here after the amp. That's cool. We can modulate the speed of the modulation. So uh, that kind of gives it a, a bit more movement, feels like it's moving around a little bit more. That's nice. Uh, let's try maybe some reverb. So we've got a few different reverbs. I really love the spring reverb in this particularly, but in this case, I'm going to go for the hall reverb and see what that sounds like. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty cool, but I feel like now it's feeling a little bit muddy in that track. So let's go and grab another EQ. I'm going to go for the pedal EQ again. Let's take away some of this low end. Okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds really good. Just dialing out some of that low end has made that fit much better in the track. What I want to do now is I want to, I want to move it around a little bit. So I don't like the fact that it just kind of sits in the middle. That feels a little boring. So what we can do is if we go down to this here, we can pull up this splitter. Um, and then what we have to do is just click and drag it. And then I'm going to put it after after this. Now, what, what we can do is if we go and set this to mono and then turn down level two, if I just solo this, now I can play around with the pan, so I can automate the pan, so it essentially becomes like an auto pan. And that adds a really nice movement which is just making it a little bit more interesting. It's not just sat in the middle anymore. It's not a really static kind of guitar. You know, it's just two guitar chords being played. So if we had a bit more movement, that makes it a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to go over to the track and I'm going to enable the automation. So let's go latch and then let's set that here. And we can literally just do this as the track plays. Oh, baby, I
feel like that's adding a lot of movement. Let's just hear that back. So we started out with this really bland. And we ended up with... Nice, sounds really good. Okay, so for this final guitar part, what I want to do is create like a sort of ethereal, shimmery, reverby sort of thing that's just going to help glue that other guitar part in place even more. Um, having sort of two two chordal parts where one's kind of really strummed and it helps break up, played with a sort of more gentle, sparkly thing is going to create a really nice texture. And like I said, we can use this as almost like a reverb sense. So I'm going to go ahead and copy over that instance of THU again. Uh, but this time I'm going to get rid of a lot of the effects that we've put in. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to get rid of the the splitter. I'm going to get rid of the EQ. Just remove that. Um, remove the flanger and the hall reverb, and we'll just start with the basic amp again. So I want this one to be a little bit cleaner. Let's just hear what that sounds like through the amp on its own. <laughs> different mic as well i want this one to be brighter because i want it to sparkle a little bit more so um a ribbon mic is not the obvious choice for for making it sparkle but it might just help soften it up a little bit i like this feature of being able to move it further or closer to the cabinet to get more or less detail I really like how that sounds. That's a really nice starting point. What I want to try now is let's go to the compressor um, and just add a compressor in, uh, not there, at the beginning of the chain. And this is going to help give a little bit more sustain to those chords. nice i don't want it to distort too much i want it to be like quite clean and sparkly um, and that's a really nice kind of soft guitar tone you can see how easy it is just to quickly change things so the next thing i'm going to do now is let's get a delay going um let's try the shimmer delay put that here and then let's make this like a slap back That's cool, you could automate that for some really cool effects. In my case, I'm not gonna do that uh, just yet. Let's go to the reverb and add in another version of the whole reverb, because that was cool. And then let's try some shimmer verb as well. And let's put that with the other guitar track. In the mix. There's like, there's a frequency in there. I'm just going to use an EQ 
somewhere sort of around eight, six, eight hundred maybe. Let's take that out. Hear that? So yeah, you can hear like that, that shimmer track is doing so much just to help supplement this guitar chord. It makes it way more ethereal, really helps that part lift up. So let's just recap on what we've done. We've got this uh, kind of funky pick thing going on over here, um, which is really, simple chain of like the tweed deluxe with some chorus plus a couple of other double tracks to form this sort of triple tracked wide thing and then some guitar chords with a shimmer layer on top And then we have it. How easy is that? Honestly, I feel I feel like there's so many options within this plugin. We've only just scratched the surface. And if I was to go in any more detail, we'd be here for hours. But you can see how easy it is to just pull up an amp, pull up an effect, um, and immediately just create something that sounds like a legitimate guitar part. And most importantly, something that really fits into the context of a busier pop mix in this case. So hopefully you guys found this video useful and hopefully you can see just how much power there is in THU. In my opinion, if you're a producer working with guitars in any way, then THU is a must have. As we saw in the video, it's so quick and easy to create great sounding guitar tones and just the vast amount of options is crazy. So yeah, definitely recommend checking this plugin out if you haven't already. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time.